Good morning, everyone. Uh, morning. Thank you. Uh, my name is Brad Chambers. I'm a president here at MedStar Union Memorial Hospital. And on behalf of Ken Samet, CEO of uh, MedStar Health, I'd like to welcome all of you uh, here today. This has been a very special time for us here uh, at MedStar Union. Uh, we're in the midst of a celebration, celebrating 160 years of providing care here to the community. Um, and it's been a wonderful journey uh, for us. Hard to believe that back in 1854, when this hospital was founded, we could only care for 20 patients. 20 patients. And look what we've done now over uh, the past few decades. But during that journey, We've added a lot of services and programs to this institution based upon the need of the community. And one of those services was around cardiac surgery. Uh, back in 1994, we founded our open heart surgery program based on a commitment to uphold certain expectations and standards uh, to the community. Those standards based on trust. And that has been the forefront of our success here uh, at MedStar. During that time, our surgeons and nurses have saved the lives of thousands, thousands of uh, patients. And to start off this uh, special press conference today, I'd like to introduce one of those uh, patients, Miss Amy Dean. Amy? Thanks. You're welcome. <clears throat> Hello. Um, my life was definitely, without a doubt, changed um, by MedStar Union Memorial. In 2004, I very, um, scarily developed what appeared to be a pneumonia-like cough. And since I had just delivered my third child, a baby girl, Sadie, um, by cesarean section, the doctors thought I had a pulmonary embolism. But the scan showed no clot, and my condition worsened very quickly. And they finally moved me into the ICU at the hospital where I was at, determined that they, although could not figure out what was wrong with me, they realized they could not care for me, and that they needed to find a place that could properly care for me. And from what Dr. Busher told me after the fact, um, that he took a lot of convincing for him because there was no OB department here at the time, that um, this was going to be the appropriate place for me. So, um, and I thank God every day that he was so convincing because within only a few hours of being here at Union Memorial, they diagnosed me with a mitral valve rupture and um, I was desperately trying to stabilize me for surgery and it was clear that at this point without that I wouldn't survive. So. Um, here I was, 30-year-old, perfectly healthy. I was a college athlete. I had absolutely no history of any medical condition, certainly no heart trouble. And um, I was being prepped for open heart surgery, so obviously quite scary for me and my family and my children and, you know, the baby that I had just had and hadn't barely got a chance to know. So it was at that point that he introduced me to Dr. Fiocco, and I remember him saying clearly that if it were his wife, he told me and my husband sitting here that this is the man that he would have performed the surgery. So that made me feel much more comfortable. And after meeting him for that first time, I can tell you without even knowing how skilled he was in the operating room yet, that he has such an incredible sense of ability to make you feel comfortable. And um, he totally made me feel at ease. And for the first time, I felt like I was going to be OK after this ordeal started. Um, but I went into the surgery with the understanding that the significant damage I had to my heart valve would mean that he would either have to, after opening me up, um, unfortunately I was postpartum so I couldn't have that great minimally invasive surgery, so they had to do the traditional surgery, that I would either have to have a mechanical valve, which would mean no more children, or a pig valve, which would mean very probably several subsequent surgeries, being I was only 30 years old. So. Um, we decided that you know we had three healthy children and it was in our best interest to decide to have the mechanical valve put in if that was you know a decision that we had to make and um, I was one of four children I always wanted four children but you know at the time we felt so blessed so we went with that decision and finally after waking up and I realized that you know because he was such an incredible surgeon that in spite the fact that I had such significant damage he was able to repair my valve and I did not have to have a valve replacement. So second only to saving my life initially, I am forever grateful to him for that. And then within only 18 months, my cardiologist was so unbelievably impressed with the condition of my heart that he gave me the okay to have another baby. Um, I 
asked him flat out whether or not this was a good decision, and he said, if you were my daughter, I would tell you you're nuts, and no. But <laughs> medically speaking, there was absolutely nothing wrong with me, and I had his blessing to go ahead and have a fourth child. So on November 8th, 2006, I had a healthy baby girl named Heidi. No complications, the delivery was flawless. And um, since then, I've thought many, many times about how to properly thank um, the hospital and Dr. Fiocco and Dr. Busher for all that they did. Um, and I just never kind of had the right moment. And then this February, I went for my first stress test, ironically, that I've had. And it was exactly 10 years from the date of my surgery. And I'm obviously not a doctor, but they tell me a 7 on a stress test is good for a heart patient. 9 is very good. And I scored a 12. And he told me that he had never seen a, a post-operative patient. My heart was as good as people who had never even seen the operating room. So um, that was my key that I wanted to reach out and be able to properly thank him. So immediately after that appointment, I tried to find a way to do that. And I hope that by being here today that I can thank both Union Memorial and Dr. Fiocco, Dr. Busher, and all the staff here that literally changed my life. Um, I would not only not be here today, but I certainly wouldn't have the family. And it has completely altered the lives of my family as a whole. So I did get you a little token of appreciation. It's an engraved heart that just, um, just explains or gives you a little insight as to just how much it means to me what you did for me. OK, well, that is, uh, <laughs> might need a minute to follow that. That is uh, truly. Uh, humbling and an, an honor, but um, I've been around too long and I've seen too much to take all the, the credit. Uh, this is a team approach, a team effort, and we see it every day from our cath lab to our operating room to our intensive care unit and our step-down unit. It's a terrific group that worked together so well and that's why we are so successful. And I've also, uh, as I get older, I realize that uh, one of the sayings in cardiac surgery is that we get to stand on the shoulders of giants. There are people that went before us that did these crazy things like say, well, I'm going to cut out a part of this valve and fix it and sew it back together and it's going to work as good as it ever did. So we get the benefit of uh, that prior experience and that uh, skill and that research that went, uh, that went before us. Uh, so there's always more that we can learn, there's more that we can do, and uh, certainly we always feel that we can improve. Now that being said, I have to confess that although I'm a strong believer in what all these people do for our service, I did at one time, one time, take full credit. <laughs> I was in the uh, convenience store in Bel Air, do you remember that? And I'm with my daughter, who's 11 at the time, and uh, I run into Mrs. Dean. We were up there for a field hockey game. We always had to stop at the Wawa for something to drink afterwards. So Amy comes up to me, hugs me, and says, thank you for saving my life. And there's my 11-year-old daughter. Well, this attractive young woman is not only hugging me, but <laughs> sa saved her. I mean, she was dumbfounded. So when we got back in the car, she says, uh, Dad, did you really save her life? And I thought about what I, speech I just gave, but I just said, you're darn right I did. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow that, uh, somehow that 11-year-old girl is now, uh, is now uh, 19, and she still tells that, uh, <laughs> still tells that story today. So the, uh, the success of, uh, of Amy's surgery is like the success of the program. It's a culmination of many people who work together to build the heart center that we have here. And uh, even though we are established and uh, we uh, have uh, developed the state's leading beating heart bypass center, we were one of the, uh, uh, one of the first to uh, acquire the commercial trans catheter valve and the first to implant that. And we've achieved a national name in uh, clinical research due to many of the people in this room. Uh, but we still have strides to make, and that's why we are here today. Thank you, Michael. So with that said, uh, following up on Dr. Fiocco's uh, comments, over the 20 years, we truly have put together a top-notch quality heart care program here at MedStar Union. 
advancements in technology have put us on the, the cutting edge. But we now need to take that a step further. And through new strategic alliances and partnerships, we will grow our HEART program to a national recognition. And to talk about the, our new alliances and really our announcement today, I'd like to introduce Dr. Stuart Sides, Physician Director of the MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute. Dr. Sides. Thanks very much, Brad. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today to share the announcement that MedStar Union Memorial Hospital has joined the alliance between MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute and Cleveland Clinic. And most of all, to congratulate all of you whose great work made this achievement possible. As everyone in this room knows, what is now MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute is and has been the premier heart program in the Baltimore-Washington corridor for many years. We collectively delivered upwards of a quarter of all heart care in the region over this past year, and we have consistently been recognized not only for that leadership, but also for the excellence of our clinical outcomes, being named one of the nation's top heart programs year after year. MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute was initiated in 2011 and has culminated in the combination of all heart and vascular care delivered by the 10 MedStar hospitals and their affiliated physicians into a single organization. Today, it is a thriving manifestation of our distributive care network, serving people living all across Washington and Baltimore regions. Their portal to world-class cardiovascular care lies through the MedStar maze and blue awning, regardless of their manner of entry, from a physician's office in one of our ambulatory sites, to an urgent care center, to one of our emergency departments, or even via MedStar transport uh, from an outlying facility to one of our major centers. It's our way of providing facilitated access for all while rationalizing the distribution of medical resources across our communities. So when we initially considered the possibility of aligning with another organization whose strength and resources would complement ours and lead to greater success for both of us, the bar was set very high. Cleveland Clinic was not only the best and most obvious program with which to create this remarkable alliance, they were really the only one. We all know Cleveland Clinic ranked the number one heart program in the nation since 1995 and a powerful international brand that stands for quality, safety, education, and research. Through our alliance, we have reaffirmed our mutual ideals and goals, that we share a vision of high-value care models that are both creative and forward-thinking, that we are in alignment on best practices as we drive innovation and a rapidly evolving healthcare system, that by collaborating, the value delivered to all of our patients can be measured in superior outcomes and restored lives, and that by, leverage, by leveraging our mutual resources and people, we are stronger together. Finally, on a personal note, let me say that one of the best parts of my job has been having the pleasure of collaborating with talented and like-minded physicians like the man I'm about to introduce. Dr. Joe Cushone, a fellow interventional cardiologist and the Chair for Operations and Strategy at the Cleveland Clinic Heart and Vascular Institute in Cleveland. Joe has been a terrific partner with us in making this relationship so successful over the past two years, and we look forward to even greater success as we expand our efforts into the Baltimore region. Joe? Uh, thanks, Stu. Thanks, everybody. We're uh, very pleased to be here today on behalf of Toby Cosgrove, uh, the CEO of the Cleveland Clinic, and Dr. Bruce Lytle, the chair of the Heart and Vascular Institute. Uh, we're very pleased and honored to be here. I think the last time we exported something to Cleveland, Ohio, exported something to Baltimore, we were all <laughs> very, very unhappy. <laughs> and to top it all off, you had to win a Super Bowl a short time later, so that really added insult to injury. And then I hear a reference to maize and blue, and those of us in Ohio are scarlet and gray and, <laughs> and referring to maize and blue, so there's all sorts of analogies here. But no, we are extremely happy to be part of um, the, and, and be invited into the MedStar family. The alliance uh, with uh, Washington Hospital Center has been fantastic so far. As you recall from our previous discussions uh, with the uh, Washington Hospital Center, that these, these alliances are predicated on quality. And what we have found throughout the MedStar system, 
uh, and here specifically at Union Memorial and at Washington Hospital Center, these are great uh, organizations that are founded in quality. And that quality uh, has made this relationship, uh, provided a great foundation for this relationship. Together, these two organi these organizations, Union, as part of our, our national network, and Cleveland Clinic and the whole MedStar family, we are far better together. This is not a, a relationship about sending patients from Baltimore to Cleveland. This is about uh, taking advantage of best practices that occur across the entire MedStar system here at Union Memorial, sharing those with Cleveland Clinic, and Cleveland Clinic showing, uh, sharing our best practices with you, and to bring good, great health care to the entire uh, Baltimore and Washington, D.C. area. So we're very pleased to be part of this relationship. It has had been incredible. Um, we've already realized incredible synergies within, uh, in terms of research and, and improvement in operations in both uh, facilities. And we think the, the future is even uh, more bright. And we look forward to uh, this relationship with Union as a real uh, lever and uh, a critical uh, point, part of the uh, Cleveland Clinic's national network. Uh, which is uh, well on its way to becoming the largest national network in the country and establishing cardiovascular care across the entire uh, uh, United States. So thank you again from Dr. Cosgrove and Dr. Lytle. We're very pleased to be here and again very pleased to be part of the MedStar family. Thank you. And uh, Joe, on behalf of the board of directors here at MedStar Union, thank you. Um, we've worked very hard over the past few months. Uh, the team here, I want to extend a sincere thank you to all the physicians and nurses that have participated on our assessment over the past few months, getting us ready uh, for today. And you're right, it's about quality, and that's the foundation of any strong uh, partnership.